All right, we're moving on to power rule two. So the rule doesn't change at all. It's just really making sure we have the idea of rewriting first in just some little algebra moves. But the, the rule is the exact same. So if I want to take the derivative of x to the n, I want to derive that, it becomes nx to the n minus 1. And just to recall, if I want to take the derivative of a constant, remember a constant is any number. And they like to mess with you. Remember, pi is a constant, e is a constant, 10 is a constant, 10.1. Any number, its derivative is always going to be 0 because it's just a horizontal line. So let's take a peek at our first problem here. All right, we want to derive this function. Remember, g prime is telling us to take the derivative. So our goal is to rewrite each of these so they look like x to a power. So let's take a look at g of x. I want to move this x up. And right now it has an exponent of 1, so this is going to become x to the negative 1. I want to move this bad boy up, so this is going to become plus 4x to the negative 2. Now, this last one's a bit of a stinker. We have to clean it up first before we move it. Notice they're taking everything in here and they're telling you to square it. So right next to this, I'm going to really say this is 1 over 9x squared. Would you agree with that? If I take 3x and I square it, 3 squared is 9, and x squared is x squared. So now we have to be careful how we rewrite this. Remember, ask yourself, what if I cover up the x, what number are you staring at? Well, you're not staring at 9 because it's in the denominator. You're staring at 1 ninth. So I have 1 ninth, and that was an x squared, so I'm going to call it x to the negative 2. I'm not putting a negative um, number on the exponent of the constant because remember that is just a constant and we're just rewriting it down. It's just of the variable. Now that we've rewritten g of x, I hope um, g prime of x is going to be easy. So take a minute, pause it, try it on your own, and then we'll compare. So I hope I didn't go too fast. I brought this down and I subtracted 1. That's how I got my negative 2. I brought this down to get negative 8, subtracted 1 to get negative 3. Brought this down, so this became a positive. 2 over 1 would be 2 ninths. Subtracted 1 to get x to the negative third. Okay, so my last step, of course, is just that cleanup step where we want to make sure that we keep um, negative exponents and put them back in the denominator. So this negative 2 is only on the x because there's no parentheses. So this is negative 1 over x squared. This x, I'm sorry, this cubed is only on the x. So this is negative 8 over x cubed. And then this cubed, again, is only on the x. This is going to be plus 2 over 9, and that x cubed is going to move downstairs. So we have the derivative, which, again, we call g prime um, of x. Let's go ahead and try another one. Um, so, again, let's just play the same game. Um, it's almost written perfectly. It's just this first term that you have to mess with. So take a moment and pause it. Rewrite it and derive it, and then let's compare. All right, so again, I just this is a square root, so it just became x to the 1 half. I brought my 1 half down, subtracted 2 over 2. That's how I got a negative 1 half. Brought my 2 thirds down, subtracted 3 over 3, which got me a negative 1 third. Brought my negative 3 fourths down and subtracted 4 over 4, which got me that negative 7 fourths. So really, all I have to do is clean it up. Again, the calculus is done. The calculus was literally subtracting are bringing down a number and subtracting a 1. Um, and now I'm just cleaning it up. So this is going to become 1 over 2, and that's the square root of x, plus 2 over 3, and this is the cubed root of x, minus 3 over 4, and this is the fourth root of x to the seventh. All right, I think you've got the game here before they get a little more interesting. Um, let's pause it and just rewrite it. So we'll compare the rewrite step and then we'll compare the derivative. So take a peek at my rewriting. This came up as x to the negative one. This came up as x to the negative two. This came up as x to the negative one third. And this became up as x to the, lost my negative, um, three fourths there. All right, so again, let's pause it and try the derivative. So a quick comparison. 
Um, I brought down my negative one, subtracted one, got that negative two, brought down the negative two, came a positive four, subtracted one, I got a negative three, brought down the negative one third, subtracted three thirds, I got a negative four thirds, brought down this, so I got a positive nine fourths, subtracted four fourths, and I got my seven fourths. And my last step for my dy dx or my derivative is just to rewrite. So this is a negative one, remember there's a one there, negative one over x squared. This is a plus four over x cubed. This is a minus one over three cubed root of x to the fourth. And this is a plus nine over four, the fourth root of x to the seventh. Okay. Now this one looks a little uglier, and again, it's because of the, the parentheses and the exponents and where they're sitting. So I picked this one in particular just to focus on the rewriting step, because truly the, the calculus part, I don't want to say calculus is easy, because it's not, but the calculus part in the power rule is fairly easy. It's the more rewriting that makes it tougher, which is just basic algebra. But let's slow down and just rewrite this together. So obviously the numerator is two. So let's talk about what's going on in the denominator. I have a fifth power, but notice where the parentheses are. They're only around these terms. So this three is going to stay out in front, and I have to raise everybody in here to the fifth power. Okay, so I'm thinking what is two times two times two times two times two? Two times two is four times two is eight, 16, 32. So I have 32 x and the power to a power rule. You're going to see a million times. Remember, when it's power to a power, you actually multiply. So that's 32x to the 15th. Now, I had this 3 in front, so I'm going to clean it up again. So I have 2 over 96x to the 15th minus. Now let's check this one out. So I have a 4 on top, no big deal. I have a fifth power again, but now that fifth power is not with the 2. It's only on the x cubed. So that 2 is going to stay out in front, and again, that power in the po power to a power is going to make that x to the 15th. So I would say I have minus 4 over 2 x to the 15th. Now I've done zero calculus. All I'm doing is rewriting these functions. And I'm going to rewrite again. Because I have these negative exponents, I'm sorry, the exponents in the bottom, they're going to go up to the top. So I'm going to say y is really... 2 over 96 x to the negative 15th minus 4 over 2, which I'm just going to call 2, x to the negative 15th. Now I'm ready to apply the simple power rule. But I had to do a lot of rewriting, and that's the part some people get frustrated with, is that they just want to take the derivative right away. But that's not the case 90% of the time. We have to rewrite it so it's in the proper form. And now the derivative is super easy, dy dx, and I'm not going to worry about multiplying it all out. I'm just going to bring that exponent down. So I have negative 15 times 2 over 96. x to the negative, if I subtract 1, it's going to make it a negative 16. Bring this down, so I'm going to get plus 2 times 15, that's 30, x to the negative 16. And we're going to just call it, well, we can clean this up. Why not? I'm going to clean it up over here, dy dx. If I multiply this, I've got negative 30 over 96, and that x to the 16th is going to move to the bottom, plus 30 over x to the 16th. And we'll call it good there. All right, the next one, again, a very, very common AP problem. Um, the reason I'm showing it to you is because you're going to see it over and over, and we've just got to be careful on the, the first step. So the power rule has to be x to a power, but right now we have division, and we haven't talked about division. We don't have a rule for division. We only have a single x term to a power. So in this case, when there is, and we call this, it's a silly phrase, one term, so you want to put this in your notebook, one term on the bottom, or a denominator, we say make like a beaver, and split. Now you want to guess which hill came up with that phrase? I bet you're right. Make like a beaver and split. So what does that mean? 
what we want to do is we want to split every single term up and we have to divide each of them by 3x cubed. Okay, and this usually entails quite a bit of writing because we got to keep things really nice and neat. So I am going to rewrite g of x. So I'll write it out the long way, um, but I would hope that you can divide in your head. So I'm taking each one and I'm dividing it by the denominator of 3x cubed. And again, I usually do this in my head, but we'll write it out so we can see it easier. But each term is going to get divided by this 3x cubed. Okay, so that was step one of cleaning it up. No calculus yet. Step two, I'm going to clean it up again. Lots and lots of cleanup. So two-thirds, I can't really simplify, so I'm going to leave that as two-thirds. And when I divide, I subtract exponents. So I'm going to get two-thirds x to the third because 6 minus 3 is 3. Minus 6 divided by 3 is 2. And x cubed divided by x cubed divide out. Plus 3 divided by 3 is 1. And x squared over x cubed, if I subtract 2 minus 3, that gets me a negative 1. So I'm going to say I get x to the negative 1. Minus 4 thirds does not simplify. There's an exponent of 1 there. So 1 minus 3 is negative 2. And then I get 3. There's nothing to subtract here, so I'm just bringing it up as x to the negative third. Now you're ready to take the simple calculus step of taking the derivative. But again, a lot. I'm just stressing the cleanup. The cleanup is the key. So take a moment, pause it, test your calculus skills, um, and we'll compare. Now, if you're feeling very confident, you can do the calculus and the cleanup all in one step. Certainly, you don't have to show all this work. In fact, you're encouraged not to show too much work on our AP Calc exam, unlike our Regents exam. Um, so again, I'll just quickly talk through in case you struggled with it. Um, I took this 3, brought it down, 3 over 1, those 3's canceled, and I got a 2, or 6 divided by 3 is 2, subtract 1, and I got 2 for the exponent. This is a constant, its derivative is 0. I brought my negative down, subtracted 1, I got x to the negative 2. I brought my 2 down, this became a positive, 2 times 4 is 8, divided by 3 times 1 is 3, subtract 1, I get x cubed, bring this down, I get negative 9, subtract 1, x to the negative 4th. So again, calculus is done. All I'm doing is rewriting this uh, function out. I got 2x squared minus 1 over x squared um, plus 8 over 3x cubed minus 9 over x to the fourth. All right, now one for you to try. So why don't you go ahead and split it up, clean it up. Um, and then compare that part with me, and then compare derivatives. So again, the more you practice on your own, the easier this is going to be. So a quick check, that was my f of x. In my head, I just divided each of these by 2x. If you want to write each step out, um, I'm encouraging you to do that. If doing it in your head is you're not there yet, which is perfectly fine, obviously. Um, and I rewrote it, and then go ahead and take that derivative. And so my negative 8x became just negative 8 because again, that's linear, so I'm just looking at its slope. Constant goes away. This became a positive 1 half, subtract 1, and I get negative 2. So I have negative 8 plus 1 over 2x squared. That goes to the denominator. All right, last example is just things expressed as functions, um, which is just as easy. So anytime you see that variable, so again, this exponent here is called a prime when you take the derivative, every function gets a prime. So when I derive this, I'm going to get the derivative of h is just called h prime of x, keep the inside. Now there was nothing to rewrite because obviously there's no fractions, there's no negative exponents, so we're good to go. Equals, so this 2 is just the coefficient, right? This 2 is just the coefficient, so it stays there. So it's 2, and the derivative of f is f prime of x minus g. So its derivative would be g prime, keep the inside of x, minus, oh dear, here's my power rule. Bring that 3 down, so I've got minus 6x squared plus, remember this is linear, 7x, so minus, or I'm sorry, plus 7, and then the constant turns to 0. So there's really nothing to clean up on this one, um, just seeing it in terms of different functions itself. So I think that's it for um, power rule number two. 
Just take your time on that cleanup. 